I'm not Christian, mm-hmm. but this is why church is so yeah. important. It's why I've praised Sh- uh, Shabbat with Jewish families. It's why I think church is so important because what you get with these are people of strong morals meeting with each other, sharing a particular worldview, and it, it is a safe place. The thing I think I find absolutely fascinating about Shabbat, Jewish families say disconnect Friday evening and it's family time until Saturday evening. And what that does is it creates a protective barrier against the ills of social media where your kids are tr- they're trying to indoctrinate you and all these things. Now you have 24 hours where it's just the family together talking. And then if a kid says something, they can say, let me explain to you. Yeah. The same thing with church. You have people on Sunday. They show up. They, they share a communal moral framework. They know each other. They trust each other. And it is substantially safer having your children associate. You know what really blew my mind? I was hanging out with Seamus uh, Coglin of Freedom Tunes. He was at church and, you know, he let us know, like, I'll be, I'll be getting out around this time. We'll meet up. We meet up with them and we're hanging out outside of this church in, in Charlestown, West Virginia. And all of these little kids are wearing, wearing, they're dressed up. They have ties. They have button up shirts. And I was just thinking to myself, like, look, man, you can rag on religion and Christianity and whatever, and there's bad people of all backgrounds. But when I see a bunch of little kids dressed nicely, being polite, giggling and having a good time, and then I think about what it was like in Chicago at these public schools, I'm like, church is better for your kids. Mm -hmm. Religious schools. I, I, I wonder about this, you know, because I went to Catholic school when I was younger and my parents uh, who were Christian and my mom is still very Christian said it wasn't about religion. It was about community and a good school that would raise kids right. That's why they wanted us to go there. And then eventually we went, we, we encountered hard times. It became expensive. So public school was free and that's what we, we opted for. But I do think it was it was very good for me. To go from from kindergarten until the end of fifth grade at a Catholic school, which was much more rigid, and then go to public school and go, my God, like seeing what was going on in public schools was crazy. Yeah. Drugs, drinking. And these are these are middle schoolers. And you were South Side, right? Yeah. Yeah. Southwest. Okay. You know, so it's it's the South Side. It's it's rough. But it's like slightly better than the like South Side. South Side. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Um. Yeah, you, you touched on a lot, and and and, but there it's not a coincidence that as America, you know, we used to we used to be a strongly Christian country, and over the past thirty forty years, it's become more or less a secular country, and and I I think I think that's probably at the root of a lot of this is you you had stronger churches, you had just the the overall culture was a Christian culture, and and that was the standard, and and. And as we've gone away from that, it's just, it's a lot of chaos because there's a, we all, we all, we all want to be our own gods, you know, and being our own gods allow us to make our own rules of what's right and wrong. And that's a recipe for, for chaos. And I think that's what we're seeing. Yeah. I, I think a large component of the culture war is a Judeo-Christian moral framework versus no moral framework at all, yeah. or a fascistic moral framework that believes there is no truth but power. Right. And that's the the postmodernists. That's the neo Marxists. They they believe they're justified in lies and mis- manipulation because the only thing that matters is whether or not you can wield power effectively. And there's some truth to that. People who have power can control people's minds and they can influence culture. And I suppose the interesting thing is, me, I believe there's a God. I believe beyond this universe, beyond us, there is something greater. And however you want to describe it, I think it is infinitely ignorant to assume humans are the end all be all of of consciousness, in which case, whether you believe in God or or, or not, there is likely mathematically something more powerful, something more uh, uh, capable, more intelligent, wherever, however, whatever. And then you have people who just genuinely do not believe that they believe they are the center of the universe and thus there will be done. Yeah. And that is a creepy thing. Yeah. In my opinion. But I say that knowing they don't believe that. And one of the mistakes I think we make when it comes to the culture war is telling someone, hey, this is wrong because of this. And in their mind, they don't care. You can say 
it is creepy for you to believe your God. And they think to themselves, ha ha ha, what an idiot. Because they believe their God. Right. They believe that we are figments of their imagination. And that's a, an extreme way to put it. But many of these people have this um, Satanist view, in a sense, of they are, you know, the, the end all be all, their existence, their reality. It is about them. Yes. That's uh, Satanism. So you were explaining that your belief is that like you don't follow a structured religion, but you believe there's a God or higher power or something overall. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So that is uh, deism. It's actually what many of our founding fathers who were came here as an evangelicals and um, of, of other Christian religions, all or most of them, many of them, uh, Thomas Paine, George Washington, many of them ended up go, like moving more as they were as they were building this country and writing the Bill of Rights and the Constitution, and as they were figuring out like natural rights and deciding that, many of them started gearing more toward deism. Like, okay, maybe it's not that there is a structured religion, but there is something greater than us to answer to, or something greater than us that created us. And so, it's deism is a is a that's that's a lot. What smart guys? Yeah, yeah. Um, I do think if you look at the Christian moral framework. Mm -hmm. There's obvious that you can always look back at anything and be like, look how evil it was. Mm -hmm. Anything. People talk about, you know, oh, the slave trade in the, in the United States, look how evil the founding of this country was. And then I'm like, let's go back a little bit further. Oh, how evil it was for these African nations to capture and sell off their enemies as slaves. Mm -hmm. There's evil everywhere. Let's try and get rid of that and maintain the good. And so I look at, I, I love bringing up this point because I get to, uh, challenge bill maher mm -hmm. bill maher his whole worldview is a christian moral framework there's no question and he doesn't understand this he thinks he's an atheist he is an atheist uh, okay. and that's fine yeah but as long as he understands his moral framework is is christian mm -hmm. what he doesn't understand his view that you are innocent until proven guilty his belief in free speech these things are rooted in the in the judeo-christian moral framework there's differences between Judaist, uh, a Jewish moral framework and Christian moral framework, but they, they heavily overlap. People in China don't have that concept of, of innocent until proven guilty. They did not develop a culture based on these biblical moral frameworks. Yeah. There are things in the Bible that we now deem very bad. You know, uh, talk about slavery and stuff. Yeah, we, we've moved beyond that. We, we, we respect the rights of humans, but we've built and retained, built upon and retained some of the best ideas. The easiest example I often use is the story of Sodom and Gomorrah. If there's but one righteous man, this, you know, I will spare the city. And that is the root of innocent until proven guilty. That's where Blackstone's formulation originates. That's where Benjamin Franklin's quote originates. And that's how we get the Fifth and Sixth Amendments. That's how we, as the American people, protect the innocent and have created the greatest nation this, this world has ever seen. In China, which is becoming very powerful, they did not have that. They've never had that. So what do they get? Well, Chinese communism. They have feudalism. They have imperialism. And now they have Chinese communism. In their world, in, in, in their perspective, there is no innocent until proven guilty. It is, you're, you're accused of a crime. We remove you from society because you are dangerous. And then we'll figure it out. So for someone like Bill Maher to say, I believe this, that, this, and we should run these things. The woke are bad. They're cultists and all, whatever he wants to say. I'm like, Dennis Prager called it cut flower politics, I believe. Mm -hmm. The root, the, the flower has been cut from the root and it still looks beautiful for a little bit, but then starts mm -hmm. to decay. And Bill Maher represents that in that there are so many good ideas he has that doesn't understand are unique to a Christian moral framework. And that it doesn't mean you need to believe in God, but you can certainly understand the teachings that we've chosen to keep as to why they're a good thing. And that's where I come back to, I think the church is a massive net positive in building community bringing people together, getting rid of the bad ideas and progressing with the good ideas. Here's the challenge the church has, in my opinion. This country still is majority Christian, like 70%, I think, somewhere around there. Mm -hmm. Too tolerant. <laughs> Absolutely too tolerant. And um, A lot of live and let live, yeah. And it's, it's to a certain degree, virtuous, but... But not to really. Right, <laughs> tolerance to a certain degree just becomes letting your child jump off a cliff. Right. So at a certain point, we say we want to love, let live, and respect, but you have to recognize that there will always be a red line, and if you don't enforce that, this is what you get. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. If you let the devil in into the public square, then then chaos ensues, and and 
the churches have not done their role right well in in protecting in protecting all of us and our kids and <clears throat> it's a shame and so yeah so something interesting about uh how our country's rooted in judeo christian cuz People will push back on that immediately and say, no, it's not. But it is because it, yeah, the, the Declaration of Independence, uh, the uh, the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, all of these these things are rooted from – they took a lot of that from the Magna Carta. The Magna Carta is rooted in Judeo-Christian principles. So – and and that was their major um, – that, that was like their outline for what they were going to do to our country was the Magna Carta. So, so, it, um, so, so that, that's a truth, you know, and people will push back against that. Saying it's not a Christian country, but I mean, technically, you mentioned you know the founding fathers being deist. Mm-hmm. Many of them overt Christians. Mm-hmm. Obviously, this country was like ninety nine point nine percent Christian back then. And so to say that it, it's strange to me that the left makes the argument that the country was intended to be secular, and it's like no, I'm uh-huh. pretty sure there are quotes about because uh, Seamus definitely loves to bring this up that uh, the country is intended for a religious people or, or something like that, a, a moral. Yes, yeah. Jefferson. Yeah. Yep. Jefferson has a quote. I, I don't remember it off the top of my head, but it was something about that. Like if, if this this country will not stand if there is not a moral framework, essentially, was what Jefferson's quote was. 